Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is Sunday, uh, August 25th, 2019. I'm Barb Hammer and welcome to Ann Beebe's Boudoir. Yeah, anyway, my office is out of commission. There was some flooding upstairs in my apartment building. And so uh, my office computer room where I normally do videos um, is out of action for a while. Uh, they're planning some demolition work to take out a wall or something. The bathroom is also <laughs> messed up. Uh, on top of that, last week I sprained my ankle, but fortunately it's um, healing relatively quickly. I noticed the swelling, uh, it feels a little bit better every day, and the swelling was definitely down today. So doing better, that's good. Uh, anyway, so I'm going to talk again about uh, the Hong Kong protests. But the Hong Kong protests aren't the only uh, uh, artificial protests, shall we say, in the world. And they uh, are connected to um, protests or regime change operations you would see in other parts of the world. And in that connection, so I've made the last video, I made the connection between Hong Kong protests and uh, the attempted coup in Venezuela. And again, today I'm gonna make that connection between Hong Kong and Venezuela, um, but also other parts of the world. So anyway, I saw, oh, first of all, I've got um, this uh, channel up because uh, this is uh, my friend Scott's channel. And uh, he occasionally does videos about Hong Kong and China. And he did one today about the protests there. So I would encourage you to watch that. It is called Footage of Hong Kong's Color Revolution and the Grifters Who Sell It. So um, um, I would encourage you, if you haven't already, to watch his videos and subscribe. And he covers a lot of things, um, but he's done several videos on Hong Kong and China. Very good. He's got years of experience, much more experience than me. And uh, so if you could go over there and, and support him. And also, um, I, I want to make it clear that I do not do my channel I'm not trying to make money from my channel. I know it's a tiny channel, so I can't monetize it. I don't have a thousand subscribers, but I don't, I'm not going to monetize my channel period. Um, because, uh, YouTube for one thing, they, um, steal ad revenue from channels that monetize and I don't want to support Google, uh, Google is CIA. Google, uh, is, um, uh, suppressing censoring channels and suppressing channels that are putting out the truth. And they have actually uh, claimed, they've said they've disabled a number of channels that are supposedly spreading propaganda about the Hong Kong protests. No, I haven't been affected. They might be suppressing my views and my subscri subscribers, subscriptions. I don't know. That could be. Anyway, so... Um, I don't need the money. I'm not, I don't have, I have a PayPal account, but I don't, I don't take donations there and I don't have a Patreon account or anything like that. Um, but, um, if you want to, I want to tell you, if you want to help me, you can actually, uh, donate to Scott. Um, he does have a Patreon account and you can actually give him donations directly. And I think I will put that information in my show notes from now on. He's also facing a lawsuit over his reporting. So he could help. He could use some help there too. Um, anyway, so I encourage you to go over to Scott's channel and subscribe and watch his videos. Um, because he knows what he's talking about. Anyway, so today I want to talk about um, a video I saw on Twitter. And I can't remember, I think it might have been Carl Jaw's account. He might have posted it, I think. Um, so I have some issues, issues with Carl, but he he has a broad following. Um, he is Chinese. He's from China, but I think he lives in the US now. And I think he's lived for years in the US. I might be wrong about that. Anyway, I think it was him, I may be wrong, who posted this. Uh, he posted a little, I think it was Carl posted a little clip from the BBC 
and the BBC kind of let things out of the bag a little more than they should have, and I think they got into some trouble. I'm surprised the uh, uh, that the video and the article is still up at all. They have had to alter it slightly, so the video is about this organization called the Oslo Freedom Forum. So as I've said before, if you see an NGO, a non-government organization with the terms democracy, freedom, freedom, or human rights, it's probably working for regime change without a doubt. I mean, it is. And there are others like Amnesty International. If they claim that their mission is to promote democracy, freedom, or human rights, that's another giveaway. Um, so anyway, the Oslo Freedom Forum, I think it, it meets in different parts of the world. And I believe it's based actually in New York City, which is kind of, that kind of gives away. It's based in the U.S. But they will meet in Oslo often. And so this BBC video, now I don't want to play, I've had some problems with audio in my videos when I'm trying to play a video within a video. Um, so I'm not going to do that. But along with the video, um, there was an article that's basically the trans, it's basically a transcript of the video. So this is not the actually the original uh, article. And actually on the BBC, let's see, there's also another place where you can find the video. And this one is interesting. It has Oslo Freedom Forum, the school for revolutionaries. And by revolutionaries, I would say color revolutionaries as in regime change. So this is what this organization is all about. So they will have uh, dissidents from all around the world to meet and there are workshops and they are trained how to overthrow governments. Yes. Um, and this was posted actually the original, they have altered, um, wait, that's not it. Hang on. Ah, yeah, okay. This is the archive, the original archive version. The title is different. They changed the title. So it was originally called Hong Kong Protest. So up front, they're talking about the Hong Kong Pro This is, oh, I have to explain. Sorry, I forgot. Um, so this article and video is from 2014. Um, so five years ago during um, or just after the Umbrella Revolution in hong kong those are the la the latest big protests in hong kong now there seem to be constantly protests and uh they will peak at certain times and it's all relative so i think actually 2016 there was some things ridiculous called the fishbowl revolution and that was over some street vendors there was some rioting overnight anyway so this was done around the time of the umbrella revolution and so the tie, original title of the article is Hong Kong Protests Activists Share Secrets at Oslo Freedom Forum. And then they changed it. They didn't want to emphasize the Hong Kong protests. There was actually a big uproar about this article and video. There was a petition and claiming that um, there was some incorrect information given but i think what happened was the bbc let the cat out of the bag so when they changed it let's see if i can they changed the title so then the new title is oslo freedom forum activists gather to share secrets of successful protests so they took out of the title the mention of the hong kong protests but i think the articles are more or less the same and i don't know this is the archive version i can't remember there is a correction at the end no so that's the original archive version so when they corrected it and put 
Oslo Freedom Forum, they put a correction, a correction at the end. Um, yes, so it said, this article has been amended after an, er, after an earlier version may have given the impression that the Hong Kong pro-democracy protests were planned by foreign activists. The amended version makes clear that the planning for the Hong Kong demonstrations uh, was carried out in Hong Kong with support from abroad. It includes a statement from Occupy Central with love and peace saying that none of its members had attended the Oslo Freedom Forum or received any specific training from the organizations mentioned in this report. The amended article also makes clear that Mr. Popovich, that's a Serbian, has not, uh, has not had any involvement with the Hong Kong protests. Well, to me, that's um, uh, the lady doth protest too much, methinks. So they're trying to distance themselves from this report, but actually in the report, it is clear that the, there is connection between the Hong Kong protests in 2014 and now, you can safely say, um, between this Oslo Freedom Forum and the Hong Kong protests. And um, so in the report, uh, so the reporter, whose name is Laura Kunzberg, she talks about this group and how they train uh, people to overthrow governments, as she says, for good, for good, you know. But to me, that means permanently, not for anybody's good. Um, so, uh, so they train demonstrators here. Uh, so I like this part, it says, um, oh yeah, so train demonstrate. However, far from being impromptu demonstrations, it is an open secret at this meeting in Norway that plans were hatched in Hong Kong for the demonstrations nearly two years ago. Aha, they didn't change that, they didn't change that. And then it says uh, the ideas, the idea was to use nonviolent action as a weapon of mass destruction, weapon of mass destruction to challenge the Chinese government. So I've called these NGOs before uh, weapons, the new weapons of mass destruction, and people have mocked me for saying that. So this idea of nonviolent action, it actually comes from an American academic, and he has mentioned in this article so his name is gene sharp and i believe oh yeah so it's this uh serbian so i guess who yeah so he was involved in overthrowing slobodan milosevic's government uh in serbia back in the 90s um so he he has worked with uh yeah he mentions so he says uh yeah it's uh, so he mentions his work in Oslo along with the writings of the American human rights activist Gene Sharp uh, is in high demand. So, Gene Sharp. So, the, my next video is actually going to be about Gene Sharp and his organization, which is also mentioned in this article. And it is called the um, Albert Einstein Institution, not Institute. There is an Albert Einstein Institute, but I think that has to do with science. So the Albert Einstein Institution is an organization that this academic Gene Sharp, who died early last year, and I think he, he was a sociologist. So uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. So in the video, there is actually the woman who is the executive director of the Albert Einstein Institution. Uh, Jamila Rakib. So the institution is based near Boston, in the Boston area. And uh, so I will get into that in the next video. And so, yeah, so in the video, there's, uh, you know, they, they show 
in the video, this video, and I will give you all the links and you can watch them. I'm sorry, I can't play it for you. Um, so they show this um, protester, protester from Tiananmen Square in 1989, and his name is Yang Jun Li. And they show Yang Jun Li um, talking to, I can't remember the images in here, the article or not. Uh, no. Okay, so they show Yang, Yang, uh, Yang Jun Li um, talking to uh, Joshua Wong, or as I call him, Joshua Wong, um, who was um, involved in the Umbrella Revolution in 2014. And he's also a key figure in the current Hong Kong protests that don't have a name, but I call them... I call it the back. They don't have a name. They might call it like the helmet movement or helmet hard hat, hard hat movement or the hard hat revolution. Maybe I don't know. There's no name been given. Um, <coughs> I also like to call it the cockroach revolution. <coughs> Excuse me, because the protesters dress in black and locals have called them cockroaches <laughs> scr scurrying around and uh, sometimes I call them the black plague but anyway so uh, the video shows from 2014 Yan, Yang Jun Li uh, talking to Joshua Wong and um, he says that he regularly, regularly um, communicates with Joshua Wong so that's interesting. So there's the connection, you know, they're trying to deny there's this connection between the Hong Kong protests and the Zaslo Freedom Forum, but there's a clear connection. And Yang Jun Li, um, so he's one of these uh, Tiananmen protesters who was part of our oper CIA and MI6 Operation Yellowbird. So he got um, smuggled out of China and he was rewarded uh, with an Ivy League education in the U.S., and he is often seen with other Chinese dissidents, uh, Uyghurs, uh, Southern Mongolians, um, um, Hong Kong protesters, uh, Tibetans. Um, so yeah, there's a clear connection. And so this Oslo Freedom Forum is teaching these um, supposedly nonviolent protest methods that come from this Gene Sharp at these gatherings and you see a lot, you also see uh, they are planning another, there will be another gathering in, uh, they, they gathered recently in June and there'll be another gathering coincidentally in Taiwan and Taipei in September, I believe next month. And Denise Ho, who's another prominent figure in Hong Kong, in the Hong Kong protest, she will be there. She's a Canadian citizen. She's from Hong Kong originally, and she lives there, I guess. I'm not sure. Um, but she's Can actually a Canadian citizen, so she's going to speak. She's spoken before. Um, she's got a very close connection with uh, the Oslo Freedom Forum. And um, uh, the Hong Kong pro So anyway, uh, <laughs> I'm getting off track here. Anyway, there's this Oslo Freedom Forum. Um, another thing I wanted to say about uh, the, uh, so the head of the Oslo Freedom Forum is actually um, this man, Thor Halverson, but he's actually Venezuelan. So his name, I guess, you know, if he's pr pronounced in Spanish, it's Thor Arwasen Mendoza. So he's from Venezuela, but he's, um, on his father's side, he's a uh, Norwegian. And I guess that's why this gathering takes place in Oslo. I don't know why, but anyway, he's, um, from Venezuela. He was educated in Ivy league university of Pennsylvania is one of the Ivy league schools. And he's, uh, not only the founder and he's the founder and CEO of the human rights, human rights foundation. There you go. And the Oslo freedom forum. And he's a Venezuelan, uh, dissident. And he's a big advocate of regime change in Venezuela. And he's a billionaire and apparently he's very shady and people, I don't know, I've heard some things about um, his business dealings, not very good. So um, yeah, Venezuelan. 
what a surprise. Um, so there's the Human Rights Foundation uh, Wikipedia page, so you can read up on that. Oh yeah, the head of the Human Rights Foundation is the chair is actually Gary Kasparov, who was a chess grandmaster, and he is um, a Russian dissident, and he's opposed opposed to Vladimir Putin's government, and uh, very vocal, very prominent. So the Human Rights Foundation and the Oslo Freedom Forum is all about overthrowing governments that are not part of the Western neoliberal savage capitalist agenda, really. Um, so that's the agenda of the Oslo Freedom Forum and the Human Rights Foundation. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh, uh, yeah. So there's a lot of links I think I'll give you. So this is a Dim Sum Daily. This is a Hong Kong uh, news outlet, and that's talking about this. Uh, yeah, this BBC report. Ah, uh, yeah. So here's the image of Yang Jun Li from Tiananmen, who was a Tiananmen protester. And here he's talking to Joshua Wong, and this is the BBC reporter. Yeah. And... So very interesting. So I'll give you the links to all these videos. You can watch them. Oh uh, yeah, here it says, um, uh, yeah, I think it says here. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, there's something about, oh yeah, and it mentions uh, the BBC, doc, this BBC report said that 10,000 protesters during Occupy Central were trained as early as two years ago. So they started, they start planning these big protests a couple of years before. So for the Umbrella Revolution, it was planned as far back as uh, uh, 2012. So they're just constantly planning these protests. Oh, the other thing that's very interesting is among the people who attend and are very prominent are members of the White Helmets. Yes the Islamic State Fire Brigade. So here is one of the members of the White Helmets. Um, yes. So this is one of the figures and he has spoken there and I think they, they may train them. Yeah. So they speak and they train um, other revolutionaries. Yes. You might want to say. Um, yeah, so the the White Helmets, if you don't know the White Helmets, they won an Oscar. Yeah, they won an Oscar. There was an Oscar, um, a documentary made about them that won an Oscar. And they are terrorists and they are promote uh, regime change in Syria against the Assad government. Oh, yeah, this is a picture. That's Denise Ho from Hong Kong. Yeah. So surprise, surprise, all these. Unsavory. So uh, another thing about this Thor Halverson, however you want to pronounce his name, uh, he's actually a film producer. So he produces a number of documentaries or movies that are very have a very anti-communist theme. So these are so he actually has an IMDb page devoted to his work. Um. Uh, what are the other links? So this is the Human, right, Human Rights Foundation link. And you can just, um, when you go through it, you see all these countries that have been targeted for regime change mentioned. And yeah, they're featured in a lot of mainstream media. Mainstream media loves the Oslo Freedom Forum. Yes, 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 yes. Um, so they, they push things like, oh, Cuba is an author. Yeah, so they always use this term, authoritarian governments oh no authoritarian governments that means they're not democratic they're not free they don't have human rights anyway um so i think that's maybe about it so the next video so i mentioned gene sharp gene sharp so there are a lot of um unfortunately academia has really been so corrupted um there are a lot of uh uh, academics and like in social science that are closely involved in regime change operations. And sometimes they're called military anthropologists. I don't know, military, they're not always anthropologists, but they're in the social sciences 
for, for sure. And I know that in Ra Iraq, there were anthropologists, I think, who wrote a, um, a guidebook for the military, the U.S. military to use there. So, um, yeah, academia has really gotten screwed up. Anyway, so Gene Sharp, I'm going to talk about Gene Sharp, the Albert Einstein Institution, institution, and this Jamila Rakib, who is running that show right now. Oh, the other thing I wanted to talk about, I want to just show you real quick because this is kind of funny. So that's not what's funny. Um, so there's a number. What is this? Hang on, hang on. Let me find this. Ah, ah yeah. So there's one thing. So um, to show you how um, these protests are not local or grassroots and they are um, like foreign, they clearly are foreign regime change operations. I mean, they just are pretty ridiculous. So here's, um, so the protesters in Hong Kong were seen and heard singing <laughs> the, the, the Star Spangled Banner in Hong Kong. So this is the video of them singing. Um, there's, yeah, there's actually, I discovered this today. There's a national anthem for an independent Hong Kong. But what's funny is they've got the British colonial flag here. Is that there's also a Cantonese version of the Star Spangled Banner. Yeah, that's how messed up things are. So anyway, I guess that's it for now. So the Oslo Freedom Forum, Oslo Freedom Forum. Yeah. So freedom, whenever you see that term, freedom, yeah. And uh, so the Oslo Freedom Forum, BBC, they spilled the beans. They spilled the beans and they talked about the Oslo Freedom Forum. So that's an integral part of these regime change operations. Anyway, that's it for now. Um, thank you.